gang my guys welcome back to the channel once again my man you already know who it is and what i do when i do how i do what i do it's your boy marco gippy king kesey baby marquis gibson plenty reviews variety vlogs and petty reviews and reactions this is gossip because people still talking it's cyber talk radio let's go one seemingly normal afternoon in 1998, 27-year-old Patrick Lamarck Hawkins, better known to the hip-hop and rap community as Fat Pat, went to his promoter's apartment in southwestern Houston to pick up a paycheck, not knowing that it would be his last day alive. On February 3, 1998, Fat Pat got into his car with three friends and drove to his promoter's apartment at 10440 South Drive. His promoter, Kenneth Watkins, known in the rap and hip-hop community as Weasel, still owed him money for a show that Pat had performed in a few nights prior. According to some sources, Weasel had initially offered Pat the option to perform some illegal gang-related jobs for him, and in exchange for the employment, they would call the debt even. The Fat Pat refused. He wanted to get paid, and Weasel agreed. On his way to get the money, Pat blasted music through the speakers of his famous Red Lincoln and joked around with his friends, just like any other Tuesday afternoon, unaware of the tragedy that was about to happen. After arriving, he got out of the car on his own at around 1 p.m. to collect his paycheck while his friends waited in the car for him. It was meant to be nothing more than a quick transaction, but he never came back. As he was exiting the apartment, Fat Pat was shot once in the head in the apartment complex corridor, and he passed away instantly on the scene. Following the incident, his friends, family, and the entire hip-hop community in Houston grieved the sudden and tragic loss of Fat Pat. Pat's brother John, better known as Big Hawk, also a rapper, was deeply moved by the passing of his younger brother and immediately left work and went straight to Houston after his cousin called him to deliver the tragic news. I so happened to get a call from my cousin and he like, man, uh, you think something happened to your brother? You know what I'm saying? So I immediately just leave, man, or I leave, I go and see him, man. Or, you know, yeah. see him, you know, man. I was just like, that, that just turned the nigga whole world around, man. Shortly after, Fat Pat was laid to rest at the Paradise Cemetery South in Pearland, Texas. Sadly, both brothers were taken away from us. Fat Pat in 1998 at the age of 27, and later on his brother, Big Hawk, in 2006 at the age of 36. RIP to both the legends, Big Hawk and Fat Pat. Robert Davis Jr., better known as DJ Screw, and one of Fat Pat's closest friends, fell into a deep depression following the passing of his friend. You know, he was taking that pretty hard. You know what I'm saying? Screw was taking that pretty hard, man. It was, you know, me and him had some... some couple of long talks, man, you know. Screw was the founder of the Screwed Up Click, a collective of rappers associated with DJ Screw and his record label. And Fat Pat was one of the original members of the group. But it wasn't just the Screwed Up Click that mourned the tragic loss of Fat Pat. Two weeks after his assassination, dozens of rappers, friends and family members gathered together in Houston for the release party of Fat Pat's debut album, Ghetto Dreams which dropped in March of 1998 and sold over 20,000 copies on the week of its release. Before his passing, Fat Pat had decided to leave the gang life behind and focus on several music projects, including Ghetto Dreams, which had positioned him as one of Houston's most promising up-and-coming rappers. Pat was getting out the gang. You know what I'm saying? He was, you know, done with that shit. Straight was, music. Straight music, you know what I mean? A few weeks before his passing, Fat Pat performed at his last concert in Austin, where he was seen with his promoter Kenneth Weasel Watson and DJ Gold. Several of Fat Pat's friends have mentioned that the show was a true success. And, I, and he'd come get him some water, because he's already about three in, you know what I'm saying? The crowd going crazy. 
The crowd went wild for Fat Pat, and nobody thought that only a couple weeks later they would be mourning the passing of the Houston rapper. Although Fat Pat never released a record while he was alive, five of his albums in total were released after his passing, including Road in the Game, which came out later in 1998. A year after his passing, Fat Pat's friend and fellow Screwed Up Click member, Derek Dixon, better known as d Rag, made a documentary about Pat in his honor with the same name of his debut album, Ghetto Dreams. Unfortunately, the case of Fat Pat has remained a mystery since the fateful afternoon in 1998, and different sources in different cities of Texas have given conflicting stories about what happened to Pat, but none of them have been officially confirmed by police. As he was leaving his apartment, prior to Fat Pat's passing, one of Weasel's stash houses had been robbed, and because Pat was supposedly one of the only people who knew that Weasel had a lot of money in that stash house, Weasel suspected that Pat had either ordered the robbery or that he'd been involved in some way. According to some rumors, the straw that broke the camel's back was that when Weasel got robbed, one of his kids was with him, and one of the people who robbed him held a gun to his son's head. In this version of the events, when Fat Pat arrived at Weasel's house, Weasel made Pat call one of the people that had robbed him, and while Fat Pat was on the phone, Weasel pulled out a gun and shot him. Apparently, one of Weasel's uh, stash houses had been hit by boys, and Weasel didn't have any, he wasn't 100% sure, but thought that maybe Pat either knew something or had some involvement. Word on the streets in Austin was, Pat was the only one that knew that Weasel had money, had that large amount of money on him. Other rumors say that when Fat Pat knocked on the door to the apartment, Weasel wasn't even home, and that Fat Pat was actually assassinated by two men who Pat allegedly owed money to and had taken too long to pay back. This is a possibility considering that Pat's three friends witnessed two men running from the apartment after they heard the gunshots from the car, but it was never confirmed by police whether or not these men committed the crime. After the hit, police weren't able to arrest anybody due to lack of evidence and the mysterious nature of the incident. Before Pat passed away, some of his friends had reported they didn't trust Weasel, but police interrogated him and couldn't find any evidence linking him to the assassination of Fat Pat. The other two men who were seen running out of the apartment complex by Fat Pat's friends were never identified, and as a result, police were not able to press charges against anybody, leaving his case unsolved. Because Fat Pat's friends and family knew that he wasn't involved in the gang lifestyle, they have denied his involvement in any kind of criminal activity that could have led to his hit. And despite the lack of concrete evidence, it's a wildly held belief among those who knew Fat Pat in Houston that Weasel was his assassinator. Disturbingly, in December of 1997, two months before his assassination, Fat Pat recorded a rap tape in which he gave a shout out to his promoter Weasel, who would later turn out to be the prime suspect in his hit. As of today, Weasel was serving time in prison after being found in possession of over $200,000 worth of coke, dope, and illegal firearms in July of 2006. If police had found any sort of evidence connecting him to the hit of Fat Pat, he would have been charged by now. But the fact is that the hit of Fat Pat has remained a mystery for over 25 years. Sadly, Fat Pat wouldn't be the only member of the screwed up clique to pass away so young. In November of 2000, DJ Screw, the leader of the clique, was found lifeless inside the recording studio in his Houston home. He was only 29 years old. An autopsy revealed that the cause of his passing was an overdose of codeine and promethazine, which were frequently combined with Sprite and candy to make a powerful concoction known in the hip-hop community as purple drink, lean, syrup, or dirty Sprite. Despite the evidence that DJ Screw's passing was the result of an overdose, family members, including his cousin Lil Chuck, another fellow member of the screwed up clique, believed that DJ Screw was also assassinated, but this was never confirmed. Just leave it alone, just put it in God's hand, woo woo. That was cool, but then it's not. Because you got people with rap sounds saying this is the reason why he That ain't the reason why he did you know what I'm saying? If that was the case, let that ride. But it's not, so he was You know what I'm saying? So somebody that pardoned him, you don't think he'll pardon somebody else? But still more tragedy was to come for the screwed up click, because in 2006, Fat Pat's older brother, John, 
better known as Big Hawk, was also tragically assassinated in the 1200 block of Red Fern in South Houston. Similarly to his brother, the passing of Big Hawk happened under very mysterious circumstances and the case was never solved. After the time of his passing, Big Hawk had an album that was number 45 on the Billboard Top Rap album chart. Although Fat Pat passed away too young to enjoy that level of success, his contributions have had a significant impact on the global hip-hop community, and his legacy has continued to inspire young generations of rappers and artists. Aside from his iconic personal albums and his contributions to Houston's unique sound of hip-hop, Fat Pat is remembered by friends and family as a charismatic, fun-loving person that could immediately lift everyone's mood with his presence. Because the path that I knew, the path that I knew was charismatic. You know what I'm saying? Uh, if Pat was to walk into this room right now, you're gonna be laughing. He will forever be missed by his family and friends, including his son, Patrick Hawkins Jr., who was very young at the time of his father's passing. Although the case of his hit has remained unsolved for over 25 years, Hopefully more information will surface in the near future so that justice can be served in the legendary Fat Pat's name. Rest in peace, Fat Pat.